So much has happened in the world of weightlifting that it is about time we spoke about it. And so I figured that uh, another news show was in order. China has sacked off the World Championships, the European Championships start list is out, and the Arnold Championships was the biggest weightlifting competition ever. Hello and welcome back to the Weightlifting House News Show, the only weightlifting news show in the world. <sighs> First off, the spring sale at Weightlifting House is now here. That's 10% off everything at weightliftinghouse.com. So go grab yourself training tees, stock up your tape, straps, and wrap those wrists, wrap the stomach that you have with a belt. Uh, 10% off everything at weightliftinghouse.com until Monday, the 4th of April. There's a link down below. Oh, and Nick's going to kill me if I don't do this. We have wraps. We have tape. We have books. We have all sorts of things. That's 10% off at weightliftinghouse.com. The thing that I want to talk about first is the fact that the weightlifting world championships has been dropped by the Chinese Weightlifting Federation due to quarantine restrictions. Now, as some of you may remember, some of you perhaps don't even know or didn't realize that it was even going to be held in China. It was supposed to be in Chongqing in November in China. Now, this was going to be used, at least this is what the Chinese Weightlifting Federation, the CWF, was saying, was that it was going to be used as a demonstration essentially of weightlifting's commercial capabilities, its commercial values as a proof to the IOC, the Olympics, that it was a valuable sport to keep in. And this competition was going to be big. It was going to have a sort of carnival vibe uh, somehow. There was going to be an expo for clothing and equipment. There was going to be music. And to be honest, it did sound really exciting. And my theory was the reason why China would have put this bid in for it and spent so much on it and got people like TikTok and, and Anta to be involved was because for China, weightlifting is an enormous part of the way that they show their power on the world stage at the Olympic Games. At the last Olympics, they won seven gold medals, which is the most they've ever won. And I mean, we've not seen a country do that in, well, since the 80s when either Bulgaria or the Soviet Union, I suppose, would have done it. But it's been a long time. And so for them, those seven gold medals are extremely valuable. They've won the Olympic Games in the 21st century every single Olympics. It's valuable for them to have weightlifting there. Without it, they go from being a country that might win the Olympics or places second to a country that places third or fourth. They drop down that power ranking. So they wanted to put on a show and show to the IOC how valuable weightlifting could be so they could maintain getting those Olympic gold medals. And fair enough, that's what we all do. Every country that's good at the sport lobbies to make sure that that sport stays in the Olympics so they look good on the international stage. So what's happened is, this is a quote, so um, a CWA, Chinese Weightlifting Association, because it's CWA, not CWF, uh, person said, after thoughtful consideration, it is with great regret that we are not able to meet all of the IWF requirements to organize the IWF World Championships this year. We are committed to our sport and would like to assure the IWF family that as soon as the situation permits, we are more than happy to host a future World Championships and IWF events as we have done in the past, which, to be fair, they have done in the past. So it's not that they don't want to. Clearly, they wanted to. They were probably really upset to have to let it go, if my theory is correct, which I'm sure a lot of people probably have thought the same. Uh, but this time, just the quarantine problems are just way too much. Uh, according to Brian Oliver, who obviously writes for Inside the Games, he said, Under the current strict COVID-19 prevention and control measures in China, all teams and officials would have to carry out a 21-day quarantine, which, if that's the case, I'm really glad that we're moving because I really don't want to have to go to China, film for two weeks, and have three weeks worth of quarantine either before or after or spread either side. It's just... It's just way too much to take more than a month out of my life just for that world championship. So thankfully, it's not going to be there if, if these quarantine restrictions are still in place. Not sure who's going to pick up the slack. There are plenty of countries I'd like to see take the world championships. I think Georgia would be quite fun. Uh, I've never been to Georgia. They obviously put on a really good European championships back in 2017. Or was it 18? It was one of the two. Uh, not sure where I would be the best in the world, but... I'd happily go almost anywhere as long as I didn't have to quarantine, so who knows. Let me know where you would like to see it. Next, the European Championships in Albania, which is at the end of May and early June, has released its start list, and it looks really, really exciting. So I want to go through some notable mentions. One, there is no Romania, i.e. no 
Toma Loredana. So Romania has opted to not pay the remainder of its fine yet. Obviously, they've been out of weightlifting for pretty much a year at this point. And so that puts Sarah Davies in the driving seat of the women's 71s. Sarah's moved up to 71s because it's an Olympic category. Toma would, of course, be doing the same, but she's not going to be there. So we're going to see Sarah um, hopefully put on a show and, and take a gold medal. Team Italy have returned with a dominant lineup, having not been at the World Championships. We've not seen them really compete since the Olympic Games. Now, as the fastest improving team in Europe, it's going to be really exciting to see if they can pull off. I mean, maybe even a win. They did place eighth in 2021, so it seems like a long way to go, but they are looking very good. They've got a lot of athletes that they're fielding for this competition. I think it's very likely. Last year, it was actually Ukraine that took the dub. Julia Imperio is just one example of Italy posting the highest entry total in a category, 187 kilos in the women's 49s. In the 55s, we also see Italy's Jennifer Lombardo topping that list. Uh, our Great Britain's uh, 55 kilo Freya Morrow is also going to be competing in that session. The return of Italy's male star Antonino Pizzolato, the 81, the you know Olympic medalist, 2021 European champion, uh, he will now come up in the new Olympic category in the 89s. Now, he used to be in 85, and he medaled there in 2017 at the World Championships, so this 89 kilo category should be a better fit for him. Now, his competition with Bulgaria's Carlos Nassar might be the most anticipated of the competition, Carlos also moving up to 89s. And when they last met, Nino beat him by a kilo, 370 kilos in the total to 369 kilos. But since then, Carlos Nassar has become a world champion at the age of 17 uh, and has totaled 374 kilos, which is more than Antonio Pizzolato has ever managed. Nino has put up 370 kilos for his entry total. Carlos has put up 390 kilos for his, which is just ridiculous, 20 kilos more. It's also 20 kilos more than Rezi Davitadzis from Georgia. Those two, Rezi and, and Nino, in at second and third in terms of the entry total, then 20 kilos above that is Carlos. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see the first ever clean and jerk world record in that new 89 kilo category at this competition from Carlos. You heard it here first. Oh, it's also worth mentioning, I was looking this up. Somehow Carlos is still 17. Uh... It was like when CJ was 13 for about five years, and now it seems like Carlos has been 17 for two years. But he is still 17, but he will be 18 at the World Championships. Remaining in the 81 kilo category rather than moving up is Weightlifting House's boy, Marin Stankileg Robu. So he's going to compete with the previously 73 kilo Bulgarian Andreev Bozidar, one of my favorite weightlifters to watch. Just his speed and his technique, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then also against Italy's fastest weightlifter, we have Oscar Martinez. So that's going to be a particularly exciting session. France's 59 kilo Dora Chacunta has put up an enormous entry total of 222 kilos. Now, of course, entry totals, they don't mean everything, but they do mean something. Uh, and if this 222 is anything to kind of go by, if she's in that kind of shape, then she should probably see a pretty dominant win. There will then be a battle for silver behind her, which looks extremely competitive. In the supers, it looks like the reigning European champion, the Olympic silver medalist, the world bronze medalist, Emily Campbell, should have a pretty frictionless path to a repeat gold at this European Championships. Of course, anything can happen. Something can, you know, go against her or go, you know, in someone else's direction. But uh, I would probably put my money on her. Interestingly enough, in that session, we also have Norway's Solfrid Koanda, who has moved up to the Supers too. So I'm excited to see how she does, because she is incredibly strong. Back to the men's side now, there is a distinct uh, hole in the shape of Anton Plesnoy at this European Championships, but I'm just assuming he's he's taking time to to mend that knee that he hurt at the Olympic Games, where he managed to, he managed to get a medal, but uh, to what end? Well, to the end that... He's not been able to lift at a good level since. He had a hard time at the World Championships, and again, he's not there now, but it's worth him putting this time into just getting healthy because that that World Championships, the one that was going to be in China that's going to be somewhere else in November, is probably going to be the first of the qualifying competitions for the next Olympics. So as long as he's in shape for that, nothing between then and now really matters at all. At 109 kilos, we have Christo Christov, who's got the heaviest entry total at 400 kilos. Where is Simon Martirosian, you may ask? Well, 
I told you a few weeks ago that he was going to be moving up to the supers rather than dropping down for 102 for the new Olympic category. And, uh, and he has done just that. So he's actually the reserve, though, in the supers behind his two big brothers, Frazdat Lalian and Gorman Nassian. And then, of course, it is Lash Telekadze who tops the tables with a 470 kilo entry total, 30 kilos over the three Armenians. Good grief, there's a lot of news this week. Let's start now with uh, some lifts. We have a 15 year old Chinese weightlifter. Wow, stands it up easily. How is he 15? What weight category do we think this guy's in? A little bit of a weird pre dip dip thing going on there. Squat jerks, it yells. Wow. Um, I mean, at 50, he doesn't look that big. He doesn't look like he's more than a 81, you know? But, I mean, 81 at 15, we've seen it before. I mean, it's rare, but we do see people like that. He could be an 81. That's absolutely amazing. That lift was on uh, Shenzhen weightlifting. Over to Georgia now, we have Lash. And since the last news show, his training has ramped up a lot. He looks amazing. But that is going to be in a separate video because there are too many lifts to go through. So that's coming out either next or it's already just come out. I can't, well, I don't know. It depends which Alex edits in advance. But that is out as its own video. Sticking with Georgia, though, Rezi Davitadze, who hasn't done enough lifts to warrant his own video. Sorry, Rezi. Uh, is looking really strong. 260 kilos in the back squat for a double. This for an 89 who, uh, God, he just never wins. I always want him to win. I like him so much as a lifter and as a person. He's so nice. And he's always right there. And he snatches so well. He snatches the 170. And then he just can't clean and jerk. But he's looking strong. They're clearly putting the work on. 260 back squat double. 160 block snatch double. Uh, and then a 200 kilo clean and jerk. And that's the most interesting one. The clean looked good. The jerk, it, it wasn't sort of direct in the most perfect of places, but the power coming off the shoulders has certainly improved, so that's pretty exciting to see. Over to Kazakhstan now, we have 96 kilo uh, Nagisa Adilatuli. Now, he just snatched a 181 kilo PR, which is huge. He hit 180 prior to the World Championships and was on the start list but didn't turn up. It was his teammate, Artyom Andropov, who did turn up and compete in that category. So we've not seen Adilatuli compete in... A well, not since the Asian Championships uh, 2020 that were held in 2021, where he took the silver behind Kino Shrestami. That's where that was. And actually, he would have taken the gold, wouldn't he? But I think he got called for a press out, which is harsh, because he is a he's a elbow bendy boy. That's just how he catches things. I think that was a little bit harsh, but uh, I'm really excited to see if he does sort of turn up to compete uh, at his Continentals, which will be the Asian Championships in July. Now, speaking of Asian 96 kilo weightlifters. Let's go to South Korea where we have got Jang Yon Hak, uh, who famously bombed at the World Championships with six misses. Normally people give up after three or four. Uh, 171 miss, 176 miss, 176 miss, and three failed attempts at 201 kilos in the cleaner jerk. Ouch. Uh, he just snatched 180 kilos for a personal record for him, and he got so hyped afterwards. And he yells and he yells at his teammates, and uh, it's really cool. I think in that video you can even see Jin Yun Song, who just snatched 175 again, uh, stood or sat behind him, um, who's obviously snatched 190 off blocks, maybe even off the floor, certainly 85 from the floor. So a great lift there from Jang Yun. Oh, and actually, let's not leave him there. Um, he also has, he cleaned a jerk 200 kilos too. He cleaned 210 kilos, uh, but missed a jerk. It was pressy, and then it went forward, and he dropped it. But he's looking strong. He pushed press 150 for a triple, 160 for a double, 170 for a single, which I think is pretty good for a 96. Like, it's hard to know with the push press because there's so much variance between weightlifters. Some 96s, you know, can probably push press. Uh, I mean, what's the biggest push press of a 96? Like, maybe 185? Maybe Sarav could have done 85 back in the day. But it, I, 170 is really good, I think. Over to Uzbekistan now, we had the national championships. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because there's a lot. Check out, just just search Uzbekistan weightlifting on Instagram and you'll find a couple of pages that are pretty good with showing the results in the videos. I mentioned a couple guys, you might have heard of them. They're both Olympic champions, uh, world record holders, world championships. We've got Ruslan Nurudinov and Akbar Jiraev. They both snatched 185 kilos. Uh, and which what I thought was interesting is there's a great video of them snatching side by side that 185 they just put them next to each other in one video and um, 
it's just interesting to see how much faster Akbar Durayev is in the pull. Now, Ruslan Nurudinov has always looked slow in the pull, and he's very exaggerated with his knees back and his knees forward in that finish and then the scoop. Uh, and it slows him down. He's in great positions, but it does slow him. Akbar just much faster as a lifter in the pull, that is. Going under, not sure who's the quickest. In the clean and jerks, Ruslan hit 231 kilos. Akbar Durayev couldn't let him win. He had to take the dub. 232 kilos. He made it look pretty nice. Sticking with Uzbekistan, though not in competition, though I think she did snatch 110 in competition, we have Super, who I think is normally 87, uh, Tersonoy Jabarova, she snatched 110 kilos in training, it looked really nice. I want to say at Nationals she did 110, 125, could have been 130, could have been 135, I could be way off here. Ignore everything I just said, she certainly snatched 110 in training, beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> Over to Team GB now, two lifters to talk about. Emily Campbell, uh, who, as I mentioned earlier, looks like she's got a pretty clear path. I don't want to, yeah, touch wood, don't want to jinx it. Um, but, you know, maybe a clear path to getting a second gold medal at the European Championships this year. She just squatted 195 kilos for a set of five after over a week of no training, which is crazy. You might have seen her on, I'm getting ads for her all the time. Uh, Google ads, actually. There might have been one on this video, who knows. It's just crazy seeing a weightlifter, especially a weightlifter who I know quite well, but even just the fact that there's a weightlifter who is high enough profile for the Google to put in ads is insane. So shout out to Emily for securing the bag with that one because she's absolutely smashed it there. Uh, next we have Freya Morrow who doubled 86 kilos uh, in the snatch, which is two kilos under her best ever snatch of 88 kilos. Uh, so 90 kilos, where are you at? It's coming soon. I think it's coming soon. Okay, now let's head over to the USA. I missed the Arnold Championships, uh, though I did speak about it on The Morning Brew, which is our Patreon-exclusive podcast. It's a whole lot of fun. We just answer people's questions, uh, weightlifting-related. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's, it's a great fun podcast, isn't it? But anyway, I want to talk about the Arnold Championships on here because I really ought not miss what was the most participated in weightlifting competition ever. I think they had... So, you know, you have an A session, you have a B session, occasionally a C. They had O sessions. LMNOP, uh, LMNO sessions. I mean, that is just insane. Um, so I want to talk about a few of the, the lifts that I thought were really good. Uh, Ryan Grimsland, clean and junked 182 kilos. I think he was an 81. So it's no 204 clean that we saw from uh, Harrison. But, you know, Ryan's only just gone up from 73. And it was a great lift. So Ryan's 182. Uh, Taylor Wilkins, 93, 121, which is huge. 214 kilo total. Kate and I went 6 for 6, uh, 109, 136, uh, which is a 245 kilo total. She did that in the 71s. Nathan Damron just absolutely blew it up. I think that 89 kilo category, the Olympic category for him, is going to be that's going to be the spot. Because he used to move, well, he moves better now. Shout out and fair play to Cal Strength for helping him so much technically. But he used to be really fun as an 85, then he went up to 96. I think 89 is right in the spot for him, so I'm looking forward to that. He went 160, 196. I think he out-totaled the two categories above. Uh, it was only like, yeah, it was literally just the supers. It might have even just been Kate Wilkes who beat him, to be honest, in total. Matty Rogers, who competed at 81, she went 110, 140, a 250 total, which is enormous. I think at the last Arnold Championship, she did 143 in the clean and jerk. And maybe 107 in the snatch. Maybe she totaled 250 there as well. She always does amazingly well at the Arnold Championships. So fantastic there. But the standout performance, no doubt, went to Mary Tyson Lappin, a.k.a. Coach Mary. So after snatching 115 kilos, and shout out to Sarah Robles, to be fair, for just being so consistently strong. She snatched 125. Um, Mary made a jump to a massive 163 kilo clean and jack that was 12 kilos over Sarah's 151 and it set an all-time American record the heaviest weight that any American woman has ever put over head she beat Sarah's 162 that she got in 2018 probably from Cheryl Hayworth I think it was who had it before that so congratulations to coach Mary Mary Tyson Lapp and go give her a follow and also shout out to uh, Will Fleming, who's just a fantastic coach. And then, and actually, I'm going to stick with America for a lift that didn't happen in competition, but it's one that a lot of people sent me and it blew my mind. Caleb the 89kg... No. Ca Caleb the... It's either Caleb the 89kg kilo, that's what I've written down, but looking at that, I feel like it wouldn't say kg kilo. But it's Caleb the 89 kilo. 
uh, Caleb Goodman. He's 89. Um, <laughs> he just hit a 209 kilo clean and jerk. Now, I don't know a huge amount about him. I think I've seen him clean and jerk in like the, the 80s, the 180s, that is. Uh, so 209. I actually watched the video at first because I got tagged in it by him. And I assumed it was a deadlift. So I actually watched it and stopped when he pulled it to the hip and I disappeared and I went off. And then later, Michael, my friend, sent me that same video and said, what the hell? And so I was like, well, I must have missed something. So I watched it and then he cleaned the weight, 209 at 89. Just insane. So shout out to Caleb Goodman for that. Okay, two more lifts and we've smashed through this week's news show. Luis Mosquera doubled 140 kilos for a few snatches. Uh, he's a two-time Olympic medalist, uh, most recently at 67. So with the Pan American champs coming up that uh, in July, these 140 doubles hopefully will translate to something big in the 50s. Uh, and then shout out to the legend, my boy, the uh, strongest man in the Southern Hemisphere. Is that true? Might be true. Let's, let's just ignore it. It's probably true. David Leite, 206 kilo power clean uh, and power jerk, but it just looked so easy. He's so strong. He's such a strong guy. And he's so nice. He's so big. He weighed 183 kilos, I think, last time I saw him. But what even is that? He weighed more than Lasher. He's a strong boy. Anyway, go follow David, because he's very cool. Uh, and go grab some Weightlifting House thumb tape. It's unreal, this thumb tape. I've been training again recently, and I use it, and I forgot how sticky it was. But what's good is it doesn't leave the residue on your thumbs. But it's quite hard to get off sometimes. But it's just because it's so... Um, what do you call it? Ad 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 adhesive to itself and then sticky enough to your thumbs that it's not going to come off either. But it's really fantastic stuff. It's saving my thumbs as I start training again. There is a sale on at weightliftinghouse.com. The spring sale. You can get your wrist straps and your belts and your straps and your clothing. Uh, it's a good time. 10% off weightliftinghouse.com. The link is down below. We do a lot of free shipping. We ship basically everywhere. So uh, if you want to support the channel and the growth of it and the media that we create and the the sport because we just feed everything back into production then uh, head to weightliftinghouse.com thanks for tuning in don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys next time